Hey everybody, this is uh, Ramon here from the Little RPG Podcast. I want to give you a quick heads up about this particular episode of the podcast. I uh, had a great conversation with Dakota Kraut, author of the Divine Dungeon series. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, there were some technical errors that were beyond my particular control. We use Google Hangouts for this episode, and for whatever reason, my mic decided to kind of uh, get all crackly for the first 20 minutes or so of a very, it's a very long interview conversation uh, with the guy who's very nice my online friend at least. Um, but uh, just heads up, if you, if you listen to it and you can't stand the crackling noise uh, on my voice, Dakota's mic is perfectly fine. His sound is cool. Um, but if you can't stand it, just skip ahead about the 20 minute mark and everything else from there on in is smooth audio sailing. So go enjoy that interview. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Little RPD Podcast. I'm Ramon Mee, I'm here to bring you the latest Little Virginia News reviews and of course, author interviews today. And today I have the great pleasure of talking with my friend, uh, my amigo, my compadre, Mr. Dakota Kraut, author of the Dungeon Born, the Divine Dungeon book one, and he's here talking about book two, the D Dungeon Madness. And we're going to have a nice little Little RPG chat. Welcome Dakota. Hey, thanks Ramon, thanks for having me again. It's uh, always a pleasure to talk to you, so I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's always a pleasure for me as well. We've already been talking like for a half an hour. And I forgot to press the record <laughs> button. Uh, so I'm sorry, folks, you missed out on all those great conversational aspects of, of ranting and raving about reviewers and, and, and <laughs> all the things we're doing with all our tons of author money and I mean, yeah. the two bucks that we made or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, I get to go get like a taco from Taco Bell or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, taco Tuesday. That's there you go. Yep. <laughs> uh, maybe they'll take a book and trade or something, you know. <laughs> well, there's a bar in, in LA that does that. They'll give um, they give free drinks in exchange for residual checks, whether they're like a dollar or like a hundred dollars. If you give them your residual check from like a television show you're on, they'll just give you a free drink. So like anyone who gets like that, those pennies, they get free drinks. That's cool. <laughs> sure. So uh, let's see. How are things in California? Bright and sunny. Uh, very bright, very sunny. It just hit like uh, 80, 85 degrees yesterday. It was mm -hmm. the first day in like uh, a while that we like the rain had stopped, but and the sun came out with the vengeance. Wow, we got almost all the way up to positive one. Um, that I mean, it was a really good day. Only a couple inches of snow left here, so you know we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, it, our weather. I know our weather conditions differ. I'm kind of curious to think about like the impact that uh, good and bad weather has on someone's writing. Because I I figure like if you're if you're just boxing in your house all day. You know, whether it's rain or sleet or snow, maybe you get more writing done. Is that the case for you? Uh, I mean, usually if it's a dark, dreary day, it's a dark, dreary, dreary day in the dun uh, in the dungeon. You know, so uh, you know, if I'm having a really bad day, I kill off a main character or two. You know, we'll we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, if, if it's a bad day for you, that characters die. People yep. people get mass mass eaten by that dungeon. Yeah. I oh that. yeah, I I definitely I definitely write based on my mood at the time. So. Uh. <laughs> no, I, I play that. Sometimes I have to like play certain music or like play uh, movies in the background. Oh, sure. Get me in the mood to write certain scenes, like especially action scenes, like where there's a lot of fighting. I write like I have to watch like some action movie, like whether it's The Matrix or like The Gladiator or or whatever. And sometimes it's very much just like oh, I'm translating what I'm seeing into like words um, to describe certain <laughs> action movements because I I I. I Personally, writing's hard for me, so I had never had to think about like actually describing fight movements. Right. You know, so, like, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so let's see. I, I suppose we should get to the the talk here because that's what yeah, people are here for, right? Yeah. We will begin with a big congratulations to you, my friend. Um, oh, thank you. Number two novel, Dungeon Madness, came out not too long ago. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the last time we talked, we were talking about my successful novel, and this time we're talking about your successful novel. Uh, your novel, number two novel, hit number 47 on the Amazon page store, which is absolutely amazing. So congratulations yes. on that. In addition Thank to you. that, you also hit number one in three separate categories. Six. Single store coming of age, books coming of age, and epic fantasy as well. So those are very big categories, which a lot of competition. And you hit number one for, for a good period of time. So congrats, man. Thank you. Yeah, I, I actually hit six different categories, uh, number one for a couple weeks there. So I also... Wait, uh, how do you check those six there? Because I only ever see like three. Oh, yeah. So there, there's... Uh, on, on Amazon, you can see like all categories uh, mm -hmm. that you fall under. So I also had number one in genetic engineering, um, coming of age, swords and sorcery, um, 
action adventure movie like and then like the the movie video Together, game future. adaptation yeah, yeah. Um, so that was really cool. Um, that was that was really cool because like I opened it up and it's like one 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 one. I was like, yes, this is amazing. You guys are all amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so here so. I post up the big old thank you from the Dakota crowd to his fans <laughs> for, for picking up the book and making him a number one best-selling author. Yes, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, now for anyone who hasn't read your book, which is apparently not very many people, according to those huh. words, um, what would be your description or your elevator pitch for the Divine Engine series and specifically Dungeon Madness? Oh, okay. So, uh, so for the whole series, um, I guess. Uh, well, let's see. So, the best way to to describe the whole series is to say that uh, uh, kind of a play on the cover, of course, is that everything is shades of gray. You know, um, we have we have all these books where you start the you start the book, you start the quest, and you have a blatant bad guy, a blatant good guy, um, and everything is black and white. And you say, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this, everyone is going to join me, all this other fun stuff. My book is not like that. <laughs> so my books are, um, you know, like, uh, it, it shows the actual quandaries, the actual uh, difficulties that people have as um, they gain more recognition or status or uh, fighting prowess or all this other thing, all these other things, you know. Um, where if you are going to fight, um, you're going to have to get some training, or you're going to get your butt handed to, you know, um, or in this case, eaten, um, in a, in a literal sense, the the whole body, not yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> it, uh, for uh, Dungeon Madness, uh, that one I really like. I really liked uh, this one was definitely a lot more action action packed than the first one. So the the first one was a lot of a, you know, uh, a discussion on on world building. It was a lot of discussion on. Um, uh, setting up the magic systems, uh, all that other fun stuff. This one was the beginning of using all of that stuff. So the beginning of uh, uh, Cal, you know, um, getting his his monsters out there and you know uh, fighting correctly. Of uh, Danny joining in fights and becoming uh, a more prominent role in in the book. Um, then uh, you know with the the second main character. Um, uh, uh, Dale and his his group, you know, um, it was um, they they starting to become actually good fighters. They're gonna uh, start becoming uh, slowly better at what they do. Like uh, in in Dale's uh, or Dale's case, you know, it's uh, city administration, all all, all that stuff. Um, one of the complaints I got was that um, they wanted to see a lot more of the building up of the town, um, and. I, I guess a lot of people don't know how much how involved that process actually is. So typically, you know, if you have the mayor of a town, right, like any town anywhere, and you say, "Hey, we're going to be building a house," he doesn't go over and you know measure the house for you and put down the wood and all that stuff. He's like, "Hey, that's cool. Let, make sure you have zoning rights for that." You know, like talk to this guy over here because. You know, while I do, you know, while I'm, you know, top position of the town, that's not my job mm -hmm. to go and and do every little thing for you. Right. Um, yeah, and and some people, you know, like especially with Alron, like his books are great because he's like, hey, I take a very active role in my town. I, you know, I build all this stuff up. I, I do all this, and he he does it in a way that's fun and people actually want to read. And with me, it'd be more like, all right, so we got a eight by ten room, and we're gonna need, you know. Uh, 30 cubic foot of feet of wood, so we're gonna have to go and uh, plane this down with. And it's like, you know, like for me, like if, if I were to start doing that, I would slowly build up like uh, actual woodworking manuals and stuff. And no one wants that. Uh, not 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 in this style of book. <laughs> well, yeah, very much a difference between like uh, a realism point of view of it, of city management, like an actual city. And, right. And, and what Aloran does is more of like a real time strategy. City right. It's like, right. Oh, exactly. Drop, like, <laughs> walls or like you, you assign laborers the way right. you wouldn't like Warcraft. To, to like crafting and things like that. And yours is, yours on the whole is is a lot more realistic in that there are unforeseen consequences for for a right. lot of decisions, whether they're grabbing power or trying to grow in strength, or in Cal's case, uh, him him experimenting. Um, <laughs> Special mushrooms. Uh, but ah, the, the, nice. No. Wow. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, not what I, would, I hadn't really thought about that, but it, that does make sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yep. Uh, and and that brings up a good point. On uh, in the second book, one of the um, main big bad guys is the mushrooms. So um, if you haven't read the book, you'll have to read it to understand. If you have have read the book, you'll get a chuckle out of that probably. So uh, yeah, um, definitely read the books. <laughs> uh, you know, just you know, my point of view. Yeah. It might be a little biased. Yeah, definitely not. No, no, no. To give readers a quick overview of, of the Dun Divine Dead End series, if you don't look at uh, Identity and Master Stories, real quick, um, in this particular case, Cal is was formerly a human. He was killed by a necromancer. His soul was trapped in a soul gem, and eventually became a self-aware entity in this gem. And as he was in uh, a case, this essentially started to cultivate, which is, which is kind of a, fa a different way of explaining like, spirit points and grabbing energy from different entities in this particular universe, um, it, and also like a, a magic system in, in, this, in a very similar way. But he uses that to create a, a dungeon. So those things that in other adventures, where they go dive into and get kill monsters and get treasure, well, this is the other point of view, the dungeon's point of view. Yes. And and the story, like if it was self-aware, how would it create traps? How would it kind of feed itself on the on the life energy force from from the adventurers? And what would its goals be? And so that's kind of the big theme of these kind of stories. And in yours in particular, is very unique in the fact that it doesn't use like experience points levels necessarily. It uses something similar, but it's going to be cultivation in this particular instance. Right. And, and and he also, of course, has a very nice uh, guide, Danny. Uh, who who is his companion and helps educate him on on how to be a good engine, and of course with any kind of resource. Uh, in this case, a city happens to spring up around it when when the alternate character alternate main character Dale discovers the dungeon, and he you know people flock to it to get resources, and so there are a bunch of like interesting themes here between balancing killing adventurers to getting them to come in, and also then there's the city building aspect of it. It's a really cool story, folks. I definitely recommend that you go check it out, books one and two, but that's kind of a, a brief summary of it for anybody who's interested in, 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 in it. Perfect. Yeah, you really did your homework on that. All right. Yeah, thanks for reading it, Ramon. Jeez, that's great. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, uh, another thing is uh, another thing with the dungeon is that uh, it, it explains a little bit uh, more. Like it kind of it kind of uh, pushes out the idea that all dungeons everywhere are sentient, and so it it gives little explanations for um, you know why in World of Warcraft or something you can walk along, step on a spider, and get a boot. You know, like it, it just fun stuff. You know, no, I, 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 yeah, I, I really like puns. I really like uh, dry humor, and I, I, I really like subtlety. So while there is a lot of, um, while there is a lot of stuff in there that's as well. Yes. Is it, how do I notice that? Like, oh, every title of the book has a double meaning. Whether it's yes. dungeon born in the first case, where it's dungeon born is the dungeon being born, and then at the very end you have your double twist, and it's oh. It, other characters reborn within the dungeon and dungeon madness is very much the same way there, there's the obvious meaning with the main storyline um of magic mushrooms gone wild <laughs> um, where like people around the world have this uh, magic uh, mushroom zombie effect um and and that's called dungeon madness at the very end there's another twist on that theme which we won't uh, spoil for anybody. <laughs> there's, double, there's always a double double meaning there right and and i i try to i try to make it um very yeah less blatant i do like i do put in a lot of blatant humor of course because i like humor <laughs> yeah. um but uh you know a, a couple of people have uh, messaged me on facebook and other places and they'll be like hey you know i just found this is this is it does this mean this i'm like yeah hey congrats man um you know i didn't think anyone would see that um well, points <laughs> you get, yeah. get the bonus yep. yeah exactly like and they're like oh man that's hilarious or um you know, just little subtle Easter eggs. Um, some, you know, uh, not for everyone, but in in my case, I think it works out pretty well. Um, Don't that. That's kind of always fun to have in your writing is that there's these these inside jokes, like people within right. those particular fandoms, be like, oh, I get that. That's right. awesome, and you'll make them laugh. And but it doesn't like it, it's not so like in your face that everybody else is like, I don't get it. Right. They're not, but it doesn't ruin the story because they don't get that particular joke. It's just right. like, oh, that's a little thing for you. If you get it, great. You don't, you don't, it doesn't yeah. change the story for you. Sure. Perfect. Um, Absolutely. Okay. So I know uh, I know we had some questions from the Facebook group. Uh, are we going to do those right away, or are we going to hang on to that for a little oh, while? No, I have writer questions for you, man. Oh, okay. Go for it. Questions for myself. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, one, okay. Um, 
I had a question actually about editing because I you've done a couple books now. I'm not sure how you do the editing process. Do you have a paid editor, beta readers? Uh, do you have prayers and sacrifices to the writing gods? What's your editing process? <laughs> well, process? Um, while I do send up the prayers to Lord Google, um, it, usually it's not so much uh, for uh, editing purposes. Um, no, I, I don't uh, have paid editors or uh, anything like that. So um, I have my lovely wife, um, myself, of course, uh, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Dylan, uh, Dylan S. I'm not going to say his full name just in case he doesn't want it out, out there. Um, Dylan S. Uh, he He's in the acknowledgments of my books. Um, so, um, and uh, my friend Hans, who is also a, a main character. Um, so, uh, I try and pull people from, you know, th those different backgrounds. So, like, my friend Hans is uh, working on his uh, master's currently in mathematics. Um, my friend Dylan is a computer scientist like I am, um, uh, but he's also in honors English courses and stuff like that where, where a big thing, yeah, a big chunk of what they do is uh, critiquing and plot hole finding, stuff like that. Um, he actually wants to be an editor, though, so he's kind of doing pro bono stuff right now for me, so he can be like, hey, look at this book I edited, people like it, you know, hire me. And well, it's working out well for him right now. Well, um, if you want to pass along his information to me, I'm looking for uh, someone to edit th this next book, at least, you know, critique it and point out sure. some things professionally. Sure. I use beta readers myself, but, um, you know, they're not professional writers or they don't have the background in English. That, and, you know, neither do I, though. <laughs> sure. Um, and finally, uh, there's my wife, um, and my wife is a molecular biologist. So um, she not only does stuff like uh, looking for, um, you know, misspelled words or misspelled context, but she's she's a person that will read the book and say, "What in the world does this mean?" And I'm like, "What do you mean? That's like that's charisma or something like that." You know, like like this is. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what are, you, what are you talking about? She's like, I don't understand what that means because this isn't her genre. She doesn't read this kind of thing normally. And yeah. I'm like, oh, perfect. I didn't even think about that. Like, if I have someone reading that's not from in the genre, I haven't explained that at all. Yep. So then I go back and I, I can add explanations and stuff. So it works out really well to have, um, you know, people from backgrounds that are not in our in our genre so that right. they can be like, hey, um, <laughs> Uh, a typical person reading this would be very confused, and I can be like, "Oh, well, I can explain that." And then I, it went really well for the first book. Like, I, I think I did um, pretty solid explanation in there for people that uh, were new to the genre. They uh, got introduced to terms at, at a rate that was um, not an information dump, but it was uh, e enough to let them understand the series. Um, I haven't used any beta readers, um, not because I don't trust people, just because I don't know them. You know, like. Right. Uh, um, if, uh, you know, if I had, if anyone lives up in, you know, North Dakota, you can swing by, we'll chat for a while if you want to be a beta reader. Um, and, you know, we can, we can make something happen. Um, but, um, I just, you know, I don't want to be like, hey, I don't know you. Um, I don't, I don't want to say anything negative. Like, I'm like, hey, I really appreciate the offer and stuff. And a lot of people definitely have offered to beta read for me. Um, but I don't, you know, you never know who's going to spoil this a surprise ending or something like that or who's gonna be like oh right in the middle of the book you put the big twist I can't believe it and it's like hey man you need to like like chill or something you know um, so I I would love to have beta readers but I only use people I know like right. personally yeah well, that's that hey your books are doing well so whatever you yeah. do yeah it works for you but I, I hear exactly what you're saying as far as the wife being a nice sounding board um, right for like making your ideas and constant, the word just taking for granted as gamers or as little PG readers makes sense to people outside of the, our, our little bubble. Because I did the same thing. Wow. She does my alpha reading. Um, she does my first draft of editing sure. like, whenever I'm done um, you know, writing a, a page or, or a chapter or whatever. And very much in the very first book, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, she's like, what's this strength, dexterity stuff? Like, right. does this affect this thing? Or like, how does, what does it do? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I don't. You don't know what that does. Like you don't, you don't realize that strength affects you know melee damage, but dexterity affects range damage, and intelligence for magic systems and skill trees and, and things like that, or whatever kind of you know select nomenclature we use within our genre. And it's like very much you have you. Re it's it's nice to have that outside point of view to point out. Oh, this has makes no sense to me because I don't read these stories. Can you explain this? And it's like oh yeah, just add a little extra there. So I get that. Exactly, exactly. Sure. So um, next question. 
Next question. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you going to take a break before you start writing book three? No. Um, well, no, not really. I, I took a break a couple of weeks, but um, something that uh, you know uh, has brought up are people like, hey, man, aren't you going to get burnt out? Aren't you? Like, we don't want you to burn out and stop writing. And um, the thing there is that this is my hobby. You know, if this was my full time job, yeah, I'd probably be like, oh man, it sucks. Like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to write another. 7,000 words a day. Oh, I'm sick of it. No, but um, for me, like, Wait, do I don't... Wait, 7,000 words a day sometimes? Sometimes. Uh, oh, my God. Well, I mean, sometimes I write, I write up to, like, 30 pages, 40 pages in a day. So um, uh, those ones usually need a bit more editing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, and sometimes I'll just drop and, you know, like, write for eight, nine hours. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, well, I have... Well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm like, I feel so lazy now. No, 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 like no, no, no. Day. So here, here's the difference, though. Uh, you live in California, which is bright, beautiful, and sunny. And you have lemon trees. Um, and here I have snow. So, you know, like, um, I, I mean, going outside for more than 30 minutes for, uh, results in severe, like, frostbite to the point where I could lose limbs. So Yeah, but I'm, I'm like an indoor kid. I don't, I don't go outside. <laughs> I, I play video games, and I, I, I look at the internet, and sure. if I go outside, my eyes hurt. Because <laughs> start to burn a little bit. <laughs> My skin starts to be burned. Yeah, you know, uh, what's this tingling sensation? I don't know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> the sun, uh, allergies. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, over over the summer, uh, the writing will probably slow down a bit, which is why I didn't put a definitive um, release date. But um, I, I would put out a tentative, like um, November December um, timeline for the third book, um, for multiple reasons. Um, the first one being that. Uh, like May, June, July, August, September. You know, like uh, August, August here. I mean, we're looking at like thirty degrees. Yeah. So September here, we're looking at usually pretty negative. So I'm, I'm by that point, I'm back inside and, and writing <laughs> at a much faster rate. Um, okay. Also, uh, weather does affect writing schedules. Well, yeah, it does. Um, and well, the second point there is that I, I really want people to read my books because. Um, you know, they want to, but I also think that a, you know, a fall timeline where people are usually more indoors and need something to do, I'd, I'd rather give them something to do uh, when I know they're going to do it. You know, right. like, uh, I'm not going to put it out in June where people are like, looking at a screen is hard. I just want fireworks. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I want, like, why can't July be here? You know, that sort of thing. You know? <laughs> well, and like we, we have very different views of the summer, I think. Because in the summer, oh. it's like, I want to stay indoors as much as possible because it's like 110 degrees. Uh, and I start to melt. At, that like, sounds amazing. At, yeah. <laughs> different, different climates. Uh, you know, the climate's better on the other side of the states or the continent. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, uh, I, I do live in America. For for people that have uh, a lot of people think, seem to think that I live in Canada. No, I'm just really close to Canada. Um, it's like an hour drive north of me, so uh, not bad. Uh, I think Luke uh, yeah. Luke Chimaleco lives in Canada. I think right. He's Canadian. He lives up there. Uh, very possibly. I don't know if he lives uh, in Canada. So, so Canada is huge. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. Huge. I think he lives in the same time zone as you. Oh, uh, cool, central. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm like, I, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, but uh, so I guess weather does kind of affect writing schedule, but um, kind of off topic there. I, I digress. Sorry. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> nope. That that was it. You answered. I asked if you were taking okay, cool. a break before you start book three. You said oh. you already took your break. Basically, you took a couple weeks off, and now you're back on your writing schedule. So you right. already started writing book three, I believe. Correct? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes, I have. Um, I'm. About four chapters into it, uh, it that, that may vary because right now I'm kind of just writing like 10 to 20 pages at a time and calling it a chapter. Um, so that might, they might become longer or shorter depending. Um, usually it's just like, oh, I'm done writing for the day, end of chapter. So, uh, I, you know, like <laughs> I do have variance in my chapters because um, just it, it's not a lot, but like, uh, you know, they're not going to just go really hardcore at it. But um, something I do uh, I do to stave off that inevitable, you know, frustration of writing is, so I mentioned that this is my hobby, right? I don't really, I don't really like watching television. I don't really like movies, um, just for the simple fact that I can't interact with them. Um, so uh, reading for me is uh, another of my hobbies. And, you know, people are like, well, it's the same thing. You're just staring at something. No, oh, well, but in, like in my own head. Imagination, uh, yeah. Yeah, in my, in my own head, I'm, I'm right there with them. I'm, I'm like, I'm 
in the battle with them. I'm fighting alongside them, you know, all that fun right. stuff. Um, and it's not passive. It's, it's yeah, active imagination. Right. And, yeah. and video games, uh, same deal. Like I can play video games. Um, downside to that is that I'm, I'm like a casual gamer. Like I would love to be able to be like, Oh yeah, man, I know every stat bonus, every little thing for this. Like I, I'm really good at this, but I, I just, I don't have the time to devote to yeah. that sort of thing. I used especially. to be that way when I was yeah. in my twenties and single and they didn't have a mortgage. There you go. Uh, now, not so much. I don't have quite yeah. as much time to play video. I think I get like an hour a week. Um, if I, if I'm just lucky to play, like uh, I just got the Nintendo Switch. Oh, and nice. I'm playing like the uh, the new Zelda game. Oh, that sounds great. And I get like a, an hour, maybe during my lunchtime at work, which is at like four in the morning. Um, <laughs> if you know, if, if I'm if I already finished the podcast stuff and the writing stuff for the week, then I'm like, okay, here's your reward. 10 to 15 minutes or an hour of game time. There you go. Very nice. Yeah. Um, well, what I do when I get kind of sick of writing is I switch books. So, like, um, I'm actually, so this is the first time I've announced this anywhere, is, um, yeah, there you go, Ramon. Uh, you're special. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually currently writing three series. So I'm writing the Divine Dungeon series, um, and I'm writing uh, two additional series at the same time. I'm just focusing on them less than the Divine Dungeon series. Um, so I'm about a quarter of the way done with uh, uh, another book. Uh, I'm, I haven't settled on the name of it yet. Okay. Um, that's uh, even further back in... Actually, it's they're all in the same universe, right? So they're all in the same universe. Um, so this first one is um, a very long time before Dungeonborn. Um, and the uh, third series is a very long time after Dungeonborn. So um, there's going to be some really interesting crossover stuff, and we'll see we'll see how that uh, how that plays out. But are, I are you, are you writing about the floating dungeon in like the earlier series? Cantor, uh, yeah, he'll probably make an appearance. Okay, because um, I'm thinking like he's the oldest dungeon that I could think of from your series that you mentioned. So like maybe he's, oh, no, sorry, just off, off the top of my head, or it was just like prehistoric like times, like when they're just developing cultivation techniques and like how they're starting to figure it out. Um, well, actually, well, I don't want to make you give details about your no, story, but yeah. I'm super curious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, so the the first series um, is basically going to be prequel stuff. Um, not not really. It's just going to be before Dungeonborn. So I say prequel is not prequel. Um, but just in a previous, an earlier time frame to right. the same universe, though. Yeah. Yes. So I'm I'm actually writing um, about um, the bad guys right now in that in that book. So. Um, but you know, another thing, like I said, is with the, uh, the shades of gray deal is my bad guys feel totally justified, you know, in what they do. And, um, yeah. um yeah. And I mean, uh, really good and evil is a perception of the person that's, mm -hmm. um, having to live through the receiving or, um, you know, uh, or the end giving it out. I can't think of the name, the, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, you know, uh, a lot of things are done with good intentions. Yeah, evil is in the eye of the beholder, I think. They thank you. That's what I'm after. Thank you. Yeah, and so, or well, evil is in the eye of the beholder. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, that's floating eye. Anyway. Yeah, um, anyway <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, evil is in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah, something. Yeah. I, see, we have the same joke references. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, but uh, so those those will be out eventually. Um, certainly no promises on those ones because, like I said, I'm focusing on the Dungeon Born series first. Um, but I'm really enjoying writing them. Like I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm, I'm enjoying these stories as much or more than the first book I ever wrote, which was Dungeon Born. Is and that because it's just a fresh point of view. It, it's, stories you it's, come out? yes, it's fresh and it's really fun to write it. So, um, that's really how I felt about, you know, the first book here. And, yeah. um, it's like that first date. It's really yeah. fun and interesting and exciting. And, yeah. and this is moving into, you know, third and third base territory. Yeah, which is also fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be real good stuff, guys. And I, I really hope you'll check it out when they come out. Um, but probably not until next year for those ones. Okay. Um, uh, let me ask you about book the third book in the series. You said it's set in the future from uh, this dungeon, Divine Dungeon series. How far into the future is it set? Is it like modern so, times, or is it like? So um, the third series, not the third book in this series, yeah. but the third series total. Um, <laughs> yeah. that, that one is going to be slightly more classically lit RPG. 
Okay. Um, so like, you know, with uh, uh, in intelligence, wisdom, charisma, all that fun stuff, um, as denoted fields instead of as like personal internal values that you just are, you know? Um, so slightly more classic lit RPG, but um, a, definitely not at all similar to how they are currently. So it, it's, but it's, kind the, of, it's the same universe, right? Yes, so it's okay, a weird. So I'm kind of curious a, to see how you're. Yes, exactly. That, and that's that's the big question for me. I yeah, guess. and it's it's. I'm really liking that system. I'm really liking the system I'm setting up there. So we'll we'll, when that one comes out, man. Of course, you're the first to know everything. So uh, you'll you'll know before anyone else, and we'll we'll geek okay. out. We'll geek out about that. Yeah, okay. uh, but uh, I'm very Are much you, so uh, enjoying it. Yeah. Cool. cool. Are you yeah. planning to release like uh, sample chapters for those, uh, other series on like your website or your Facebook page at all? Uh, most likely, um, as as it progresses. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, but the, like I said, the uh, the release dates for those are completely undetermined because right. uh, book three takes precedence to me. Because um, they're basically side projects at this point. Because you, exactly. you have your main series that you're working on. Book two yeah. is done. Book three is done. You have an yeah. audiobook coming out, and those are the big projects for you because that's that's right. your first love. You know, right? These, exactly. are your, these are their side chicks. They can take their time. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, it's it's more uh, just being able to say like um, a lot of what I'll do is I'll be like, oh man, this is a really awesome concept, and I really would love to do this, but it wouldn't make sense for my character in this book to do it. So I'm like, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Can I do it with this guy or this guy? Yeah, sweet. Write down in that book, you know, and then go back and make that a more fully fleshed out story. Um, so it's. It's just fun. It's just fun. Um, yeah. And no, I, uh, I thought, honestly, I've thought about doing something similar. Like sometimes I'll just you just have like this great story. You're like, oh, this is a great game mechanic. But then you look at Joe and like, oh, it doesn't fit in there. Um, exactly. Like what is uh, Scotty? Scotty Funch does this all the time. He'll he has like a, a bunch of different series, and he has Origins, ARS, and um, uh, what was it the the one like in an apocalyptic future? Um, and he but one's fantasy. The one he just put out is like a real time. Uh, yeah, uh, turn-based strategy game mechanics. Um, Very cool. Doing, has Earth Defense Fortress is also uh, 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 turn-based strategy. Little RPG. I'm like, oh, this are all. I just, I can't, I can't, I don't write that fast. I'm not that creative right. too. I have to focus <laughs> on at a time. Otherwise, it just won't get done. And that's just me. But I understand the feeling of like, oh, this is an amazing idea. I want to develop it, but I have this project that's it's doing really well, and I want to develop, and I want to be faithful to those readers who are right. invested in that. Series. Exactly, and that, and that's really what it breaks down to um, is uh, making sure that like the people like I never expected to have a fan base. I really expected my first book to go out and be like, "Hey, mom, I see you. You bought my book. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Or thanks, mom. You know, all that other stuff. Or like, hey, my buddy over here did. But it really took off thanks to you and to uh, you know the lit RPG group and uh, finding that niche, um, and. Uh, so again, thank you guys so much. Um, so, yeah, um, let's uh, let's I guess get back to. The, I'm really going off topic there, man. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We, uh, yeah. uh, have you ever had that moment where like a fan sends you an email or a message on Facebook saying, "Thank you so much. This is such an amazing book. You're my introduction to little RPG." Mm -hmm. um, how does that feel for you? Uh, pretty much amazing. Um, yeah. So there, you know, there's other authors out there that. When I was first getting started writing, I was, um, you know, uncertain like how to how to you know move into the stuff, and I was like, you know, asking questions like, hey, I mean, how would you guys suggest I get published, or how would you suggest I do this, like all this other right. stuff. Because it feels and, like a big gigantic mystery when you're starting out. It's like, how? Right. What's is there a magic fairy you have to like? Right, exactly. You know, <laughs> to or something. I mean, how do we do right. this? Right, and um, I mean, there were a couple authors I talked to um, that just blew me off, and that was just the worst feeling. You know, that was yeah. just like, oh man, that sucks. Like, I understand you're busy and all that stuff. Like, it's it's cool. Um, there's also some that were like amazing and really really helpful, and uh, so like uh, I wanted to thank you know like Alron Kong. Uh, I want to thank uh, Will White, and um, you know they they those guys were really instrumental in helping me. Um, Get started, which was really cool, um, and uh, you know, um, I mean, definitely lots of other authors that I, I reached out to, but uh, George R. R. Martin hasn't responded, you know, and yeah, we'll see what happens. J.K. Rowling, you know, she's like, I ah, go as D.K. Rowling, and I'm like, nah, 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 it's cool. I'll just keep my own name. Um, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like, I, I never talked to either of them, but um, it, that would be really fun. Um, yeah, but I think our, I think the authors in our community and the literary community, I think, are very open about. 
like talking to fans. So, I mean, we basically do on a, on a daily basis within the little RPG group, like all the authors and all the fans very much intermingle and like give opinions yes. and like comment on because because all the authors that I know that I've interviewed, they're also readers. They're fans. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They started out even if they don't have time to read anymore because they're writing so much. Hopefully, um, they they started <laughs> out as like huge consumers in the genre, so they understand what these people who are just discovering literature because you're going through what they're looking for and like how how excited they can get for finding <laughs> like their like their community right like the the type of fiction that they didn't know that they wanted until they read it it's like we right. we, I mean, we all understand that exactly and um you know uh, and and that's another thing like the people oh yes so the the reading versus you know the you know where do you where how much do you read versus how much do you write um and for me, I don't really have to choose, which is kind of cool, because I read at a just ridiculous speed, man. Like, um, I, I'm not, I'm not trying. Yeah, I'm not trying to brag, but I mean, like, ridiculous speed. Like, I, I usually finish uh, like any of the the land series in about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, I read your book in about forty five minutes. Um, just, just because, like, you, you, you didn't write in a way that, like, I had to stop and like analyze charts, which right. was nice. You were like, "Hey, so here's what's going on. Like, here's a little bit of stuff, but I didn't have to be like, okay, break it down. What, you know, what's the best rate to do this? You were like really clear with your writing, um, and like, uh, you know, like, um, just I'm, I'm kind of a speed reader, but I just I do that for fun and because I really get invested in the story to a point where I can't stop reading. So, um, oh, one one that I was just reading was. Uh, the uh, uh, the Dark Paladin series, or the the yeah. new first book uh, by I can't say his name, um, Russian writer, uh, but that has Vasily uh, Vasily Mahenko. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, the author of the uh, excellent the writer. series. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, great series. Both of those. Um, so the Dark Paladin series. You know, I I opened the book and said, oh, average time to read like thirteen hours. I finished it in like two. You're like yeah. challenge accepted. <laughs> exactly, and it was. I mean, it was great. I mean, great storyline, great plotline. Couldn't put it down, and that's the issue. Because the more I like a book, the faster I read. So um, I had yeah. to. I had yeah. I had to um, have like my Kindle thing. I had. I had to um, set it up so I can tap like quick. Because I, if I try and do like a swipe thing, I I, I actually had to slow down. So I, I usually just tap <laughs> tap tap. Tap and that's how reading goes. speed is limited by physics, apparently. It, it really, <laughs> pretty close there. Um, yeah, but uh, it's, you know, so the the first uh, or, uh, Dungeon Madness came out, um, you know, uh, at the end of or at uh, uh, February fifteenth, and since then I've read about forty books, um, and it's uh, March eleventh now. So it's it's been about a month, um, and if I didn't have Kindle Unlimited, I would be absolutely broke. So thank you, Amazon. <laughs> a little shout out there, you know. Oh, um, I hear exactly what you're saying, man. I, I wish I read as fast as you because that would let me get through these books a little bit faster. Because I, mm -hmm. I'm, I, this last week, this week, I'm reading like eight, nine books a week. Um, I don't read as fast as you. I'll, I'll say, um, I just have the type of work you do. I can just, I, I end up doing this way. I, I have my phone read it to me. Uh, oh, cool. A text to speech app. Um, while I'm like working, I just plug in and it's like. You know, do my work, and I can I can listen to it in like this weird Siri voice, and that's how I can <laughs> do my stuff because I I at least have more time to read I think than you do. You just read faster than me though, so I'm like it's it's kind of the trade off. But I wish I I read as fast as you do apparently because I could get through these books more <laughs> as as bad for not getting through like ten or twelve books that sure. are coming out like every week this month apparently. Yeah, um, and and that that really helps with the breathe in, breathe out writing. So uh, let let me sorry, let me explain that. Um, so you know how when you're writing, you're putting down like, like it sucks everything out of man. Like it sucks out emotion. It sucks out like like what you're doing. You get so emotionally invested in. You get so like logically invested in it. Like everything that you're doing really goes into your book. And by the time you get done writing every day, you're like. I'm drained, you know, like I just, I need a break. Just like with, you know, work, you know, like you, you by the end of it, you're drained. And um, so I say that the more you write, it's like breathing out, you know, like, like breathing out, breathing out, breathing out without taking a breath, like go, 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 go. And if you don't stop to like inhale, you know, to like, you know, take in another book, take in some, you know, some other things, other hobbies, other, you know, whatever, whatever else you want to do, but something different, you know, uh, that's that's how people get burnt out is 
they just go, 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 go until they can't handle it anymore, and then they right. just lose it. Um, so the great thing about being able to read really fast is that I can breathe in really, really, really hard. <laughs> you know, uh, and and uh, for a lot of readers, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, just like really go at it. Um, a lot of readers, you know, um, as you as you go that you you live their life, man. You live their story, and um, you can you can cram a lot of lives into you know a short amount of time if you can read really fast. So. I mean, it's been like a month since uh, you know my second book came out, but it feels way longer. I mean, it feels way longer than that for me because I've uh, gone through the academy with the dark paladins. You know, I've been uh, building stuff up in the land. I've had to find clothes with the guys in uh, Adventures on Terra. You know, I've I, you know like all this other stuff, and um, you know it's it's great because. You, you you have all these this fun that is all in your head too but i mean like you know it's it's great because then you're like oh man like i see that i really like that concept here's my take on it like here's what i would do in that same situation yeah. and then you just kind of build those up over a period of time and you're like all right cool like now i have an idea of what i want to see for my own book because these guys are awesome like they wrote they write awesome books and you know i want i want to do something as awesome so here's here's my competing Eric my com, com, my competitive spirit is going on and here's my competition and uh, and at the same time my friends you know so it, yeah. it, it's kind of like a, a weird amalgamation of stuff and then that turns into uh, a book and um, people seem to like it which I'm very appreciative of um, you know um, I don't know uh, what I'd do uh, without them. Little shameless, you know. This is actually empty. So yeah, uh, <laughs> just showing off some merchandise, guys. Cool yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. It's cool. Um, so we have hey, I have merchandise. Yeah, man. I have cool. merchandise. It's cool. cool merch, like, man. Um, yeah. Like uh, we have uh, 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 Miko, uh, the the guy that does the the cover art for my books. Um, he has he has a shop on uh, Designed by Humans, and he uh, he's like, hey man, um, would it be cool to put your stuff up there? And I said. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll be your first and best customer. You know, like, I mean, I'm gonna switch out my whole wardrobe with this stuff, man. See me at Dragon Con. I'm just gonna like have on the hat, you know, yeah, sweater, t-shirt like underneath. Little RPG authors walking together with all their own merchandise on. Yeah, there you go. I'll it's like, I'll, I'll start out like really, like really fluffy, and then just keep giving people shirt off my back, and then pull <laughs> pull one out of my backpack, put it back on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then you should get a t-shirt cannon, just like just. Pop one, <laughs> yeah. Throughout the con, just like people just knock people over <laughs> left and right. Yeah, I don't know, man. I couldn't. I, I feel like people from a distance won't recognize this or what, like who I am. So like, I'd be like really close when I had to fire it off, and I don't know. I don't know if that'd go over well, you know. <laughs> no, you disguise it as as cosplay as a proton pack from Ghostbusters. Oh, there and, you go. Yeah, then like once you're inside, you just like zip down the jumper, and you're like, ha ha, I'm in. <laughs> we, do, we do like a whole little RPG video serial about like you getting to the con to give out your merchandise. Oh yeah, there you go. Like disguise yourself in cosplay first. Yeah, just like chase people down. Get back here! I got a can on you. <laughs> you will uh, take this T-shirt. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, wear this. <laughs> uh, I'd give someone a shirt if they would wear it. Yeah, I'd do that for for merchandising for me for sure for them. Good 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 times. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I hope to like look at some stuff online to make merchandise for uh, Little Pitch Podcast and Adventures on Terry just to give out t-shirts uh, at sure. Dragon Con or like at the Little PG Gala, which is the, the mm -hmm. same time as Dragon Con. And it's like, uh, uh, it's, it gets a little pricey, but I shouldn't complain because yeah. I, you know, it, it's basically kind of a tax write off yeah. according to my tax lease. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't <laughs> complain. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, let's keep going here. I'm really going off tangent a lot. No, no, so, you basically um, answered another one of my questions. I asked you if, you if you've read any great books recently. Um, yes. And you, you answered that perfectly already. You said The Land. You said mine. Um, have you seen, um, what's the name? It's Michael Chatfield. He he does the Am Amarillia series, I believe. And mm -hmm. he's putting out a book a month, like a 430-page book a month, which is wow. absolutely, yeah, I'm like, I'm stunned by that writing. And they're like fully... Like edited, I see the book too. I'm like, yeah, I had like double, double plug. <laughs> double yeah, see, I, I see my book there in the the back yeah, corner over there. Yeah. So I'm oh. like, you know, I, I can I can I can do the same thing here, you know. <laughs> uh, Adventures on Terra, great book, guys, great book. <laughs> you know, yeah, audio book. If, if you know Al the Bill. author, they they sign it, which is really nice. <laughs> oh. 
This is great. Um, yeah, I, I've been trying to get more authors interested in the uh, in the book exchange, actually. Um, and uh, you were great because you didn't even exchange. You're just like, here's my book, man. And I was well, like, yeah, cool. you already gave me your book, so it's like you already did <laughs> already. Right. Well, I, I mean, I still appreciate it. And and other authors out there, guys, I'd love to I'd love to have your books. And um, I I'm really trying to get a collection of authors like signed books. So you know, if if you would like mine, I would love to have yours. So me too. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey now, um, but uh, yeah, we exchange buddies. It's okay. Oh, absolutely. We, we absolutely. can just stay like on t shirts. I exchange it with other authors. Yeah. Oh shit. There you go. Uh, new interesting idea for a shirt. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't Authors want adventures on Terra? Yeah, that's like a button. It's like yeah. anyway. Um. <laughs> all right. So what's next? <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. Let's see. Um. <laughs> With book two being so successful, um, what do you think helped you to actually get to where you are with book two? Like you, you had your book one experience, and that's um, just from like a personal. Opinion, it's all new in book one. You, it's your first time publishing. It's your first time writing. Generally, for a lot of little pretty authors, you have to learn all these different you know nooks and crannies about the uh, Kindle direct publishing and making a real book and like a physical book and like an audio book and everything's a new skill. Um, right. But with book two. You already know all that stuff. So, what have yes. you what have you learned between book one release and book two release that made book two such a a a, a good success? Um, so, I'd like to say that I've learned how to be a good author, but you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, the the reviews seem to like it, um, <laughs> majority of them. Um, so, the uh, I guess with the, what I've learned was, um, I mean, KDP is super easy to use. Um, I highly recommend it for people um, that are just trying to get their books out there. Um, I guess I think for me the biggest change was that in the second book I was able to write it so fast because I by that point I understood my characters mindsets you know like I understood how they would react in conversations or how they would react in certain situations and it was able it was more it was less it was less difficult to write them um, because I knew how their character would be, you know, like I, I didn't have to like introduce a character and bring him up from square one. Like right. here, here's how he goes. I hate writing backstory, by the way. Like I really, I really don't like going and saying like, uh, "Hey, here's a new character. Let's go off tangent and tell you about his childhood." It's like, no, I'm not going to do that because um, if you were to meet me, if you were to meet me in the street. And you walked up to me, and the first thing I did was start telling you all about my life. Like, oh, yeah, so I've done this, I've done this, I've been in the Army. You know, when I was a child, you know, I lived on a farm, all this fun stuff. You know, I used to jump off bridges for swimming because it was fun. And, you know, it'd be like, get away from me, crazy person. You know? Yeah, I have a different point. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, we're friends now then. You've shared all, you've, dis you've disclosed all this information to me that we must be friends. <laughs> That's what well, I would think. Yeah, like, well, you'd think that, but I'm saying like random dude walks up to me on the street, has a sword, you know. And he starts telling me about his life. I'm going to be like, you're weird. Like, get away from me. You know, because like in real life, you just you don't walk up to someone and suddenly meta kind of know everything about them and their situation, how they've gotten there. You well, only I hear know what you're saying, but I think yeah. we're different people because I would think like a guy oh, yeah. walks up with a sword, like it's happened, <laughs> isn't it? Like status screen or like, <laughs> request for me. Is that what this is? Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, like, just, 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 like, yeah, I, I got no, that. Yeah, like, I'm with you. I'm, no, 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 I'm, I'm yeah. with you on that. Like, I totally agree. Like, I'd be like, all right, game on. Put me in the game. We're good. Let's do this. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd be a mage, please. Um. So, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, like, when just, just getting up to someone, you know, unless they're like a public figure or something like that, you don't know. You don't know their past. Right. And, no, I, I know what you're saying. As far as like character yeah. development, you want because you, you're you're getting your books emphasize realism. Uh, right. As opposed to like a lot of other, in, including mine. mine. Mine's very much less realistic than yours. I use levels and skill and sure. trees and experience points, which is all very gamified. And they're and fun. You <laughs> use something that feels like on a, on a different historical timeline in Earth, it could very much happen. Like if it, right. Eastern philosophies took off and like cultivation became like a mainstream thing in cultures, this could potentially happen in like some right. parallel universe. Right. But and including those consequences are social constructs. Like right. it's implied to blabber on to people that you don't know about your life story when they didn't ask, uh, and and things like that. So I, I I get that that's what you're kind of yeah. moving towards. I think. 
Yeah, and and uh, that's like I said, this is all personal preference yeah. to writing. So I I have nothing against other people who write that because you know typically do. yeah. Well, I mean typically if you put that in your book, there's a good reason for it. Like yeah. hey, this is going to be someone that you should know these things about. And um, I mean you I mean it's definitely interesting a lot of the time. It's definitely like a good story. Um, but in my in my in my books, it just doesn't make sense to right. like say. Like, all right, so here comes uh, Nez, like the swordsman in second in the second book. He's introduced it fairly late in the book. Like, you have no backstory about him. You have no right. idea. This dude is just zipping around with a sword. Like the mercenary number three. Yeah, exactly. But all of a sudden, like he's has a huge role in the book because like he's really good, you know. Right. And also because someone won the, the Facebook competition that I was doing at the time, and that's how Nez got in the book. Um, and and or like Minya, right? You don't know her backstory, except that she tells someone like, "Hey, in order for you to trust me, you had to know this." So here's a little tiny bit, but it's not like, "Hey, um, you know, right, growing, the, growing up, I was." Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he, like, she's attracted to establish trust, and socially, when you want somebody to trust you, you one of those ways to do it is to disclose right. personal secrets about right. yourself, right. because then you're creating a, a a social bond with another entity, and that's what she's basically doing. There, it's not just right. oh, I'm I'm social. I want you to know everything about me. I'm you know, right. it's 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 very much like these are my personal secrets. Mm -hmm. I want you to trust me, so I am I'm giving you the key to my past and my. Sure my pain so that we have that emotional connection and you, you can feel like you can right. trust me. Exactly. And yeah. um, otherwise, you know, typically, you know, in friendships and in, in all these other things, things just kind of come up naturally in conversation. Like it's, it's not like, Hey, here's an info dump about my life. It's, it's like, Oh, Hey, yeah, man, I can do that. I, I mean, I worked, you know, as uh, whatever for X amount of years and then people are like, Oh shit, dude, that's cool. Or, or, you know, that's, that's awesome. Like, I didn't know that about you. And it's like, oh, yeah, cool. And then you might have a conversation about it from there. But otherwise, I mean, you just, you don't know that about people. You just had to, right. you had to. Are you saying that you don't have a resume about your life that you give to every person that you want to be friends with? Oh, man, is that what I've been doing wrong? Jeez. Because I, I, I am doing this wrong, apparently, because I have a character sheet that says Ramon Mejia on it. You know, I, I just added level one author. Oh, yeah, know? right. Come on, man. You've, you've gone up a few levels since then. <laughs> You're you're at least like what like so it went from novice to apprentice at least now. So okay, like, I'll go with yeah, apprentice. Yeah, 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 there you go. Like I I would consider myself very much novice the apprentice level myself. So like you're at least at my level or higher at this point because you also have the podcast and you know you all, all the other fun stuff. Um, but um, yeah, it's um just just I don't know. I I, I go for for a level of realism in my book like where. Um, kind of like you said, like it could be an alternate timeline sort of deal. Yeah. Um, but basically, I'm just trying to replace science with magic. Um, but there, I mean, like just like anything, like everyone's like, oh, science is an art. No, it's no, not. No. Science not is exactly science is a science, science. right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, oh, well, magic um, could be either way. You know, it depends on how you're taught. Like, uh, if you're like, hey, there's these uh, these runes, and these runes have these specific like you would do this in this order and this happens. You do this right. in this order and it happens. That's it's very much a coding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I'm a programmer, so. Yeah, um, me too. That's the way I come yeah. with my, my, like, my spar writing. I'm like, oh, coding, magic coding. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, hey, do this, else do this, you know. Like, uh, it, it's, an if, it's an if statement. Like, if, yeah. if, if magic is applied, activate effect, you know, yeah. or else remain, uh, you know, like at zero or whatever. Go, go to one, uh, depending on your program language I don't know um, but yeah I mean like um, I, it's just uh, trying it's trying to make things as logical as possible and and as I, well while remaining fun you know like, yeah, yeah. and I think that yeah. I mean I mean this is kind of going off tangent but I think that, that background of ours and where we're very much logic based individuals and it's kind of what draws us to lit RPG in general because it, it, it's there are worlds that make sense and they have rules exactly. and as long as you understand those rules you can do well because you right. you you understand almost the very nature of, of that universe, and you can you can map out your characters, whatever the case is. And I think that's something that a lot of new authors who are coming into the genre just don't quite get. Like they're they're very much about story. They're very much about entertainment, which is great. Right. But I think they don't. I think they miss that portion of it. And I sometimes I think it's just because they that's not the kind of person they are. They're they're the creative person. They're the person who who's been writing their whole life, and and they kind of miss out on that particular aspect of. Of of, of of logic systems. 
Right. No, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And um, I mean, definitely not to knock other authors out there, but like, oh, yeah. um, you know, they ever everyone has something that they're looking for in a story. Typically, mm -hmm. typically when you write, you're writing something that you would want to read. And um, for us, you know, that's like, hey, I want defined systems that make sense. You know, yes. I want, I don't want someone to just be able to go, hmm, and poof, things happen. You know, I want like, Spelicus. how did that happen? Why did yeah. that happen? You know, like, what's going on? You know, because otherwise people get confused and, and confused people don't right. enjoy writing we, I mean, basically, reading your books. Yeah. I think a lot of this is also that we read those stories. Yes. It's just, I, no I explanation because or, <laughs> you know spell a kiss and it doesn't make sense within a logic system and that kind of hurts my brain in that right. i don't understand the logic behind it or the system behind it and it's like okay what well, it feels like you just waved a magic wand and sometimes that's exactly what you did but right. um it, it's my my brain is very much set <laughs> up on on things making sense right and rpgs especially do that for me it, yes it gives video game terms or like tabletop terms or whatever it is those systems Math based, logic based, things connecting like branching out, maximization of of skill trees or character builds or whatever, those oh. things make sense to me, and so that's part of. Sorry, that was me. That's my mic. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I actually tapped it. Oh, um, but yeah. those 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 are the things that draw me into it. So you're, I think you're absolutely right in that. That's the kind of story that I I wanted to create a world that had rules that make sense because this one doesn't sometimes. Right. Yeah. All right. Yep. And. It doesn't doesn't hurt that you're the as the author you have unlimited power in that world. So, <laughs> yes, um, no, um, in, in the sense that you know, like you can say, like, hey, this is this is what I want to read, and every yeah. every book up till this kind of skirts around this. I want to say that, and I can because I'm the author, dang it. Yeah. And and with you, it works very well. Um, so. You too. Uh, Oh, thank you. Yeah. So um, I've pulled this really heavily off topic a little bit there. Um, so I, I'm just trying because uh, I know you you uh, you have a time frame here. So uh, for maximum amount of oh no how how long oh. you I mean oh cool all right, this all right cool all right yeah so they do all the uh, server stuff man it, this is like if your furniture arrives at your house we'll put a pause in it but other than that, <laughs> we can go on for like forever man I'm 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 hopped up on this uh, this episode little podcast is brought to you by caffeine. Yeah, there you go. That's all right. All uh, but yeah, so I mean, we like we got off a little about topic, but yeah, I think I think that's one of the things. I'm like, I'm trying to knock other author either. I know that they're 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 basically better authors than me, so I I get that they're good at their craft. Right. But it's like as a reviewer, I see these issues again and again where they they want to be a little RPG, and they just don't quite get that particular portion of it. Like they're like, I'm I've been taught my whole life. Don't tell these numbers. Don't right. don't show the don't show the background stuff. Don't show skill trees. Don't don't take people out of the immersions of their of their of the storyline. And some authors have intentionally like they said I'm like on other forums like I'm taking out all the stuff that they want. Are they going to get mad at me? I'm like yes, they are. Yes, exactly. very much. Like nope. it, you know, and and it, it's frustrating <laughs> as all heck to me because as a reader and as a as a consumer, I'm like these are the things that I love to see, and I, I keep saying it and. Authors and some of the new authors, they're like they get mad about it because they they feel like they know how to write better, and I'm like they they do know how to write better, of course. But like in this particular genre, that's what people like. Exactly, like it's, it's just so hard, and and it's almost heartbreaking because their stories are really good, and they have to give them bad reviews because they say they're literary RPG and they're not. And I'm like, oh man, I like the story. But there was nothing lit RPG about it, and like, it's sci-fi, or it's video game fiction, or it's you know whatever, mm -hmm. and 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 that's just what happens sometimes. And I always want every author I've ever read to do well right. in their story, and I have to be honest about my critique sometimes. And I, I you know, I'm, but that's just me ranting a little bit as a no, no, totally. I mean, that's, uh, that makes and that makes sense, and a lot of people are definitely going to agree with you on that. Um, so, um, yeah. yeah. Back yeah. to your questions, though. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, audiobook. That is something that's new, as in, like, literally, you, you talked about it today. That's the only reason I know about it. Um, you have your first not, uh, audiobook for Dungeon More coming out. I think it said March 28th was what it said on Tantor.com. Um, I don't know if that's completely accurate, if that's, like, a tentative date for them. But you have the first sample of your narrator reading that for you. So tell me about that experience of, of creating or, uh, an audiobook. Um, so that was uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, so 
again, wasn't expecting to have an audiobook in the first place. Um, so because uh, I, for most of the time, I thought like, uh, if I'm going to have an audiobook, I'm going to have to record it. And I mean, I like writing, but who's going to want to listen to my voice for eight hours? I mean, no, I, I tried that out and I like, I did it on my, my, my stuff. I'm like, oh no, I listened to it. like, no, no, this is not a skill set I have. Right. I'm a professional. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, so I was just like, eh, you know what, without an audiobook, it happens, you know, it's, yeah. it's a good book anyway. Um, and then uh, uh, Tantor got a hold of me, which is, uh, which was really cool. Um, and they're like, hey, you know, we want to uh, do an audio book of your book. Are you interested? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, they, uh, you know, suggested a few different, uh, different guys that would uh, do or be able to, you know, fit, fit the voice that I was looking for. Uh, I, I currently have a uh, Vikas Adams um, as, as the, uh, as the author and he's spectacular. Um, Really, I mean, great guy, great acting, great voice. He's he's done a few other lit RPG guys. Um, now, did you uh, actually well, speak to him about your novel? Oh yeah, yeah, I have him on okay. speed dial. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's like top fifteen most called people on my phone. I don't, I don't talk to many people, but still, like you know, that's pretty good. Um, so uh, he was great. I mean, the whole the whole experience. Like he'd call me and be he'd be like, "Hey man, I'm reading through chapter six and I see a context switch here. Do you intend to do that?" And I'm like. Yes, that's that's supposed to be an Easter egg later on, like because a lot of people will they'll message me and they'll be like, "Hey, man, I, I I noticed an error in your book," and I'm like, "Is it though? Is it? Is it?" <laughs> and they're like, ah, "I'm pretty sure you you've said this, and I'm sure you meant this." And I was like, "No, nope, I meant what I said." Um, sometimes like uh, there was you know, he has found a couple errors where he's like, "Hey, man, I'm reading through this, and this doesn't even make sense because the sentence just ended midway through the sentence." Yeah, so that that's you know happened to me. Yeah, and like, and people yeah. at my audio reading, I'm like, oh, I, I I need to rewrite that sentence. That doesn't sound right to me anymore. Right, exactly. Or like, you know, sometimes yeah, sometimes you'll just be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna redo this. I'm gonna redo this. And sometimes like a chunk of a sentence will just remain there. And yeah, and um, it's unfortunate, but you know, um, and so he's like uh, found a couple errors where he's like, hey, I don't want to say this out loud because it doesn't make sense. So what's the actual correct version? And I'm like, oh, it's this. And then I'd be like, cool, all right, I'm going to go back to my, uh, you know, house on the beach here. And, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, he calls, and he's like, hey, man, um, I'm, I'm writing, I'm doing this, or I'm reading, I'm doing this stuff, and I either found this or I did this, or, hey, what's the personality of the person that you're, uh, for like, you know, here, like, how do you want this to sound? Do you want them to have an accent? He, I mean, he is great and a professional. If you have the option to use Vikas, uh, I would definitely, like, recommend him. Um because he's also like super fun, like like you know like I I, I heard the first bit of the audio like yeah, there's just a little snippet out, um, little little teaser, um, and you know it starts out and I'm like at first I'm like hmm I, I don't know if this is if this is Cal but then he actually like says the first words and I'm like oh my god I love it oh it's so good <laughs> it's so good it's so good and um like I I. Personally, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. It, I, I know I felt the same way when I heard my narrator speak in my character's voices. I was like, once you once you hear it, and it's like, oh, click. Yep, that's it. Yep. No, no one else needs to apply. <laughs> right, so exactly. This position, it's been filled. Right, and and plus, like, it's it's also really interesting to like get someone else's interpretation of how my character is. You know, because like there's a few things where I'm like. Like I put in certain emphasis on words um, right. in my head, and I try and mirror that really closely in the book. Like you know, like uh, little dashes that like like in you know like in a comma you can like separate it out instead of using parentheses or something, mm -hmm. um, and or like you know just italicies or bold or something like that. And um, he hits those pretty well, but it, like even with the emphasis how it's supposed to be, sometimes it's like. Is that how people are taking that? You no, know, like, and so it's just really cool to have that, like, because a hundred people can read the same book and have a totally different experience every time, and yeah. it's just really cool to me. Um, so they're gonna have the same experience because someone's reading it to them. So that's it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that because I get a free copy. So. <laughs> oh, no, I think they give you more than one free copy. I think they give you some for like audiobook. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I, get, I get I get like twenty five from Audible. They're like, oh, here's twenty five free ones to give out to people to promote oh, your book. Man. 
I'm gonna have to like, drive a harder hey, bargain. I give out two, and I'm like, the rest are just kind of sitting there. Maybe we'll give them away or something to give away. <laughs> I think I get six total, um, and I'm trying to. I'm trying to get. I, I tried to do a thing on Facebook a while back where I was like, "Hey guys, if you if you you know feel the need that you, like you need an audiobook, let me know, and I'll try and get one to you." Because um, like, uh, for instance, my aunt is blind, um, and uh, she really wants to read the book, but she can't. Right. So, uh, well, pretty much blind anyway. Um, and uh, so for me, like that's a totally legitimate reason. I'm going to give her an audiobook. You know. Okay. And so I, I tried to put it out there. We're like, hey guys, um, you know, if 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 you have a good reason, like that you would want an audiobook, just tell me. I'm not going to make it a competition. I'm not going to do that. I just want to know. Like, tell me your story, why you need it, and I'll try and get it to you. Um, and no, man, it was crickets. Like, every, well, I mean, it kind of makes sense, like, because everyone on Facebook is probably going to be pretty well versed in reading. So. Well, I think you just asked a bunch of people to give you their life story. Well, no. I think we just we previously <laughs> established that 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 is apparently not socially correct. Oh, jeez. Uh, well, I, I put it up on Lit RPG group too. Uh, you know, <laughs> just like, hey, uh, who wants a free copy? And just crickets, yeah. man. Like, I'm like, oh man. At, at first, I was just like, oh man, no one wants it. But then I realized like people are super cool. Like they're like, you know what? Someone else is going to need this more. Yeah. It's very and much it's, like, yeah, I know. Yeah, and that and that's just the coolest thing. Like. Um, all the people that are, you know, have liked and followed my page on Facebook, or um, the people on Litter PG group, um, they've all just been just the best people. And it kind of blows me away, like, because they're like, "Oh man, uh, here's a chance for a free audiobook, like 13 hours of great times," and they're like, "You know what? Someone else is gonna need it more." And I'm, I'm just like, "You guys are amazing." Again, like, I, I can't even say that enough. I just. Uh, just have the best fans. So no, no, we absolutely yeah. do. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. I just, but this one of the things I talk about the most with, if I go on another podcast, talk about Loader PG or just some writing article or even on the podcast itself, it's the community that to me is the best resource and the most amazing part of, of our genre. It's, I mean, the books are amazing and I love reading them, but it's the community that's kind of grown around it and that we're all very similar in our love and our enjoyment for this one thing. And, right. and, and, and that to me is, is very rare because it's never happened to me before with other, you know, I'm, I'm not part of a fantasy group where I'm disinvolved. I don't have a, a sci-fi podcast <laughs> uh, th that I just had to make because nobody else was serving our community this way and I, and I wanted to give back to it. Um, and so that, that to me is, is like, I agree with you, it, it's our community that's our, our, our greatest treasure. For sure, absolutely, absolutely. All right. Okay, so there you go. Audiobook stuff, check. Yes. Okay, uh, let's see. I think actually that's all my questions. So um, we, oh, see, there we go. He sent you, <laughs> did he sign that for you? Oh, this? Yes, yeah. he did. Um, just got oh. this in the mail. For some reason, um, oh, I, I'm just kind of, you know, like cycling through the good books mm -hmm. I've been getting, you know, really good yep. one here. I have that one too. I think I ran into those, but. Sure. Um, you know what's funny? I don't have any copies of my own book yet. I just because I, I got a box of them in, like I ordered a box of them, and I immediately just sent them out. Oh, um, yeah. Me too. I'm out. Yeah. I, I just <laughs> them. yeah. But I didn't get a land one. I have to. I have to talk to him about that. About oh yeah. Uh, he was the first. Yeah. He was the very first person to sign up for the book exchange. So um, that was really cool. Um, and uh, it was it. I, I moved recently to a new place, um, and it got lost in the mail because of it. So uh, they're like, oh, well, you know, he sent it here, but you're, you're here, so there's more postage, so we're just going to hold on to it. Um, and, like, I think he sent that, like, two, three months ago, like, seriously, like, back in, like, Christmas time, and I just got it. And not not at all because of his fault, but, right. like, I, I, like, I haven't even yet written him a thank you note yet. So, um, <laughs> like... Literally just just pulled that out of the mail basically because well, there you go. He just got his so. big thank you. Yeah, exactly. So, oh yeah, thank you, Elron. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. Well, those are all my questions for from my personal questions, author questions, chit chat and stuff. Um, we'll go into questions from the audience. We have a couple of those. Uh, they're really good. Some of these are from new, recently new to the community questions, like uh, Takara Mitsumi. Uh, she actually has three questions for you. Um, your books have great sales rankings, especially book one, which has been out for a while. What are you doing to market your books and keep the sales momentum? Or is this a result of your books being in Kindle Unlimited? Um, a little bit of both. Um, 
So for me, uh, something we talked about is that this is uh, a hobby for me. This is something that I do for fun and for personal enjoyment. And I think that kind of reflects in my book because, you know, people feel that, like, I wrote to have a good time. I wrote for to for enjoyment. I didn't write it for readers. Like, I didn't write it for anyone in particular except for me. So if you have my same sense of humor, you're going to like the book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, a part of it is that I, I think that it resonates with a, a certain subset of the population, which is awesome. Um, I do... Uh, push it out. I have a few different uh, like subreddits um, that I post to. Um, I do uh, Imgur um, or Imgur, depending on how you say it. Like uh, you put up, throw up a post every once in a while like, hey, I wrote a book. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. Um, but also definitely Kindle Unlimited. Um, so when I first put out the book, I put it on Kindle Unlimited because um, it's free. And that means that more people are going to read the book. Right. And and that's that was like the thing for me. Like I was like, I don't care if I make zero dollars. You know, I do not care one whit. You know, like I'm I'm putting this out there and I'm I'm doing this. Like I'm pressing the button. I'm publishing a book. You know, and I I wouldn't have cared if I didn't make any money at all. I just want people to read it. Right. And and that it came back as overwhelmingly positive reviews was like mind boggling, you know, just like I, like I said, I didn't expect, you know, people to really read it and multiple oh. tens, multiple tens of thousands have now, which mm -hmm. is um, pretty much pretty amazing to me. Like I, I have uh, people on different continents uh, sending me messages, you know, um, it really took off in uh, Finland and Denmark which was cool. Um, Australia. Really cool. I've seen yeah. like, my Kindle yeah. numbers as well in Finland. I'm like pe people are reading it in France and <laughs> Germany and like yep. Japan and in Finland. I'm like, wow, that's, I mean, it's not like a ton of people. Most right. of the myself are from like the United States. Right. But like international, I'm like, oh, I, I yeah. think there's like one guy in Finland. I'm like, oh, I know, I think I know exactly who that is. I, I've talked to him in the group before. Right, and a uh, shout out to New New Zealand. I, I yeah. guess not a lot of people, you know, like uh, talk about them, but yeah, they 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 read. So yeah, go you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, appreciate uh, it. Just so everybody knows, people in New Zealand do read. We're making that a factual statement. <laughs> Great. Um, otherwise, yeah. So uh, pushing sales is not something I really do. Yeah. Um, I, I put it up like, hey guys, here's this uh, like tiny bit of free marketing that I can do. Um, so, you know, go for it. Um, and that seems to have worked out pretty well. Um, beyond that, like the Facebook group, you know, LitRPG, um, you have a fairly dedicated, um, you know, fan base there where they'll, they'll say like, hey, um, what books are coming out? Because I'm a voracious reader and I need to know. And you're like, hey, I put this one up and it's kind of like what you're after. And then people are like, all right, cool. So that was great. And then they tell their friends and their friends and all that fun stuff. So um, I don't, I, I haven't uh, put any money into marketing. I haven't done anything like that. I, uh, I, I mean, I can't. <laughs> uh, uh, student loan debt. <laughs> um, but <laughs> like, what is that, uh, a PhD and a master's program do you pay off? Yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that. So, um, you know, it, it, it's like this, like I said, this is a hobby. It's not something I can dedicate money toward. Um, so um, that it takes, that it took off was surprised to me yeah. more than anything. So um, beyond that, yeah, I do, I do put it up on social media sites, uh, some stuff like that, just every once in a while, like, hey guys, if you haven't read this, check it out, because I like it, so I hope you do too. Um, and, but the biggest thing I think was Kindle Unlimited, just to get people interested at all yeah, in the book. They, they feel like they don't have to, they're not taking a risk. Exactly. Like book, cause they've already paid yeah. nine dollars for the month, so anything yeah. they read is just like, oh, this is. I'll, I'll take a chance because it's, it's in their minds, it's free. Right. Exactly. And and that's perfect. And that's that's. I mean, that's what I want. I just I wanted people to read it, and that was, that that was all that was important to me. And mm -hmm. so, I I can't really offer much advice on on yeah. that you know on on that front of marketing because I just I don't really do it. So sorry. <laughs> I feel like again, a lot of times our stories are very similar in that we both just wrote a story and right. we put it up on Amazon. We press pub, not expecting anything. And right. then there's 
apparently a, a, a fan base that developed or people read it and, and we're both like super surprised like wait wait you're not my mom and you're reading this <laughs> yeah yeah and so i i hear exactly what you're saying and as far as marketing goes it's like yep facebook twitter social media is free marketing um but again i don't I think this is probably the extent of like most of the marketing that a lot of little RPG authors get to do is right. like, oh, I show up on, on this podcast that I do. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, that's kind of it for most people. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, this, all, this, yep. The, the podcast yeah. definitely, yep. That helps. I mean, this isn't really marketing. That's why I'm like from my perspective or like from mm -hmm. yours, I think it's just like, we like having conversations and talk to sure. people who like the things you like and it's fun. Oh, and yeah. it, but it also does it. I mean, and I, 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 I understand this like an existential sort of way. Like, other people look at this and, and they kind of base their decisions sometimes, reading decisions on the things that, you know, we talk about or the reviews that get made. And I get, kind of get that. But for me, it's just like, oh, I'm just talking about the stuff I love. And you're, it, you, you're one of those things. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you, buddy. Um, but yeah, and, and another thing. Uh, one little tiny thing was uh, the cross promotions in uh, the second book. Yeah. So sorry, I, I had forgotten about this one. Um, but uh, you know, um, something great is uh, other authors out there. You know, they want they they will promote your book if you promote theirs. And right. I think uh, I think I have your book at the end of um, at the end of book two. Um, you know, so it's like, hey, if you liked my book, here's another amazing author, Ramon. You know, like go check him out because he's amazing, and hopefully, you know, you saw a sales bump there because um, I'm fairly certain that I had I I got one as well, like from other authors that have put me at the end of their books, right. and that's something I'm always looking for is like to do those promotions uh, with other people because you know if if people are reading your book, I want them to know like the, hey, there's more books out there. You've oh you've hit you've hit the end of the series. Well, hey, here's other books that you can read in the interim while I'm writing. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, but keep, always keep, like, keep, oh. keep them in the family, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's also very much like, oh, I love these books. So, you know, right, like, exactly. Go read them and, you know, they'll tell you about my book as well because I, I assume you like it if you're reading it. Right, you know? exactly, exactly. Sure. All right, so she, you said she had three, so that was, that was number one. That was one. Uh, the second right. you kind of sort of answered, um, but there's uh, an additional portion of it. Are you going to make your books wide anytime soon? So and, and by that, you yeah. know, be publishing it outside of the Amazon ecosystem, like uh, whether it's Barnes and Nobles or somewhere else. So uh, y yes and no, yes and no. Um, so currently, you can get my books at BarnesandNoble.com, but you can't get it in the store. Right. Um, so I'm kind of working on that ish. Like, uh, like an extra e ebook, or is that a physical copy of Barnes and Nobles? Uh, that's a physical copy. So okay. ebook is only available currently through Amazon. Um, and uh, that had that does have the exclusivity due to Kindle Unlimited. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, like I, I don't want to try and tempt fate there by putting it up somewhere else. Um, but yeah, so the uh, I mean you can get the book on multiple retailers. Um, I'm 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 working right now. Uh, actually, I, I I've been talking to a couple of publishing companies. Uh, they they contact me, you know, because they're like, hey, we've been seeing that you have overwhelmingly positive reviews on your books, and we'd like to, you know, we'd like to work with you. Right. Um, and uh, one of those is uh, you know, um, offering to take the books and translate them, um, as as part of the deal as um. You know, like, uh, so if you're French and you want to read Dungeonborn within, like, 60 days of, you know, signing on with them, you could have the French copy. And hopefully grammatically correct because I cannot read French. I'm sorry. You know, like, I, I really hope it's not machine translated. I hope it's, like, an actual person going through, you know, like, working on it. Um, but, you know, that's, that's one of those things I'm looking for is trying to open it up to a wider market. Um, and we'll, we'll see what happens there. So, uh, the short answer, yes, I'm trying to open up to wider markets. Long answer, it might be a while. So. Right. Cause yeah. there's a bunch of negotiations, cross fitting, yeah. Yeah. seeing what works for you the best. But I think exactly. your, your goal basically is to, is to get your stories into as many other languages as possible. That seems yeah. to be a primary like, focus for, yes. for what you're looking for and, and less about profit. I mean, making money is important because you have bills to pay and this is nice supplementary <laughs> income. Exactly. But I think for both of us, it's like, oh, we just want people to read our stories and enjoy them and you know, have and a good time. Yep, that's exactly it. Like more than anything, I just want people to, 
you know, I want them to be like, oh my gosh, that's Dakota Kraut, you know, like, like, or hey, you, you know, like you, you go out and you see like, oh my gosh, this is George R. R. Martin. Like, I would love to be like, have people come up to me like, oh my gosh, you're the, you're the author of Dungeon Born. And I'm like, I'd be like, oh my gosh, hug me. Yes, you know, you, you actually know who I am. That, that's amazing. You know, um, and I don't want them to have to be like, hey, your book is like $30. I don't know who you are because I couldn't ever afford to buy your book. And right. like, that's the thing, like I've been there, you know, like I, I, I think uh, there was one semester uh, where I was, you know, in uh, like I started out at a community college and uh, I had to work out a deal with the school because I couldn't get a loan. So I, I was like, hey, you know, like I'll pay my tuition like rent, you know, like I'll pay like X amount of dollars every month. And so like semester ended and I was, I had 30 cents in the bank account. Um, and, you know, I, I've been to the point where it's like, I don't have the spare cash to go and buy that book, even though it looks great. And that's the thing with like Kindle Unlimited. I know there's a monthly subscription with Kindle Unlimited, but I mean, it's it's the best that I can do really without putting up for free. And, right. and you know, um, so, uh, I mean, I've been in that position and I, I want to open it up to as many people as absolutely possible, you know? So um, I'm not even too concerned about the Russians that, you know, have already ripped it off and pirated it up on their sites. Cause that, it's Ooh, like, yeah. Hey, it's like, Hey, the, the book is free. Like, the book is free. I don't know why you stole it and pirated it and put your own name on it, but someone out there is reading it and enjoying it. That's cool. Wait, you know, so they, it's fine. Well, I get that they want like to, to read your story, but you're saying that they claim that Oh yeah, they slapped their is own name. They did? Yeah, totally. Um, there's like three or four Russian sites that have it up and one of them, one of it is still in English. So, I mean, um, but I mean, it does have viruses. So, you know, woo. Um, you know, because me personally, once I did the, uh, the audiobook for Dungeon Terror came out like last week and it's already up on like pirate sites. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, oh, that, to me, that's like a compliment. Like, oh, wait, somebody liked this thing enough that they right. want to like pirate it and give it away for free. Because I understand that yeah. but it's like are relatively more expensive than ebooks that are like right. minimum 15 bucks. And if you don't have Audible, then it's like 30. And like that's right. kind of expensive for, for entertainment. Um, right. But I right. can. I, I, I mean, that's just their price. That's I have no no decision making in that particular respect. But it is to me is kind of like a compliment saying, "Oh, it's on this pirate site that I was just visiting for research purposes." Yeah, right. Yeah, just to see if it's there. You know, like, uh, like, yeah. uh, see, I, I wasn't the one that found it. Um, a couple other people are like, "Hey, man, your book is up over here. Should you do something about it?" And it's like, well, that's Russia, so what can you do? <laughs> yeah, it's the internet. Yeah, and and you know, like, but that's the thing. Like, I'm saying, like, my book is out there for free. Yeah, I don't particularly care about people having ripped it off because, again, it, it's free. What I care about is like people like, hey, this is mine. Like yeah. I did this. That's, and that's it's the like, part I have a, an yeah. issue with as well. Is like, oh, the credit portion. I'm like, wait, yeah, I spent six, seven months of my life writing this book and editing it, <laughs> and getting it nice for everybody, paying for cover art and and all that stuff, and you're right. gonna try to steal credit for my thing. Yeah, and like, I mean, you that, already took the book. What, what more do you want? Like, seriously. I'm like, just fine. Leave my name on it. Give it for free. I don't yeah, care. Exactly, this. exactly. Well, I mean, I, I care. So, like, American authors, I do have copyright privileges, I'm just saying. But, <laughs> like, um, like. Yeah, internationally yeah, that, unenforceable. Yeah, pretty much. But, like, I mean, the the intent there is, is to say, like, hey, I mean, you have access to it for free. Just, yeah. like, I just want that count. Like I want, I, like for me in my own mental space, I'm like, I want an accurate count of how many people have read the book. So like, if like I were to put out a book and like three people read it, I wouldn't put out another book in that series. You know, right. I'd just be like, it's, it's dead. It's cool. Like the, um, it's like a game yeah. for you. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. if it's like, oh, this went nowhere, no one wanted it, no one kept it, I'd be like, all right, cool, whatever. But if like, it's just because someone ripped it off and you know, I have no idea what the count is, you know, they're going to be waiting a very long time for a second book. Um, uh, on the plus side, at least their anger wouldn't be directed at me. So <laughs> that, that is definitely a, a good way to look at it. Definitely yeah. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Question number three. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're just on the same ones. She's asked, uh, do you have a mailing list? If so, uh, what are you doing to keep your fans on the list? Um, well, I have your names, so no, just kidding. Um, so, uh, I do have a mailing list. Um, it's, uh, available on my Facebook page, the divine dungeon. Um, and, uh, 
basically what I do is for anyone who is on my mailing list, um, they get the first uh, three or four chapters of the book two weeks before anyone else. So right. the book went out for pre-order. Anyone on the mailing list got access to that uh, those three or four chapters. And some people are like, oh, spam filters took it. Totally, oh yeah, I totally you know, want it and all that. But so I just set up a, an Insta freebie thing where they had to sign onto the mailing list in order to get the book again. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll give it to you. Like, I, it, it's not so much like, uh, oh, I, I need you to have it because I'm going to put out things every day. I'm going to email you all the time. It's like, no, uh, if you're on the mailing list. Uh, that's a good thing for both of us because then I can be like, oh yeah, check it out. There's like a thousand people on my mailing list, and they all want to hear oh, really? updates. A thousand people on your mailing list? Pretty close, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You know, it's, it's weird. Like, if you're gonna be on the mailing list, why not follow the page? You know, because like, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. yeah, I know. It does like a click of the button, you know, instead of having to check your emails. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that was really cool. But um, I don't. Uh, one of the things I said was, you know, I, I'm not gonna put out updates unless it's like super important, like, hey, uh, I broke both hands and like part of my tongue got shaved off, so there's no way that I can type out this this book, so it's gonna be a longer wait or something like that. Or it's like, hey, um, all the people on the mailing list, like here's something that's coming out, something really cool, or like here's a promotion, like something that's actually useful. I'm not gonna be like, hey, well, I wrote an extra chapter today and I want accolades. No, I'm not gonna do that, you know? You're not, you're not spammy about it. Exactly. Like, um, pretty much the mailing list is there for the benefit of the reader. So, and, and that's, that's again, how I, that's just how I see it. I don't know how other people treat their mailing lists. I don't know what they do, but I think maybe the reason that I have people joining my mailing list is that I, I don't spam. Like, literally, the only way to get those chapters a couple of weeks beforehand is to be on the mailing list. And I think that's the only piece of mail that I have ever sent out on there was was that so yeah, i that's mean interesting. i mean that's an interesting way to do it yeah. i do things yeah. my, I'm a, my i have a mailing list for the little bridge podcast which is just essentially the show notes for the podcast something like sure. link to the episode and everything and that goes out weekly but it's like you know 40 people at this point uh, <laughs> so i'm like it's not quite as you know intense as your readers but I'll, obviously you you send things out um a lot less so i'm like to me it, like the mailing list isn't as useful um, mm -hmm. because I have the platform already with right. the podcast. With exactly. The, um, you know, I have a website, I have a recommendation list, which comes up um, every time in mid on Google for literature pages, like that on the first page. So I kind of have those different places where I'm already talking and communicating with the with the audience I'm looking for. Right. Uh, so the mailing list to me is like less less important. It's like more, more convenient for like someone else. It's like I, sort of the people who get it, like, oh, I don't always have time to, to look at Facebook every day and so getting it in the mail is like very convenient as far as like a list of reviews or the podcast. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So next question. This one is from Jay Taylor. He asks, um, Dakota has stated that he's already started on book three. So his question is, how do you keep that kind of momentum going uh, when writing? And do you ever take a break and step back in shock at the fan reactions? Um, definitely do take breaks, but um, typically my breaks are more um, just focusing on a different aspect of things. Like, uh, hey, um, I don't, I, I can't physically make myself write anymore because my hands are getting carpal tunnel or something. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over the book. I'm going to read through it and make sure that I'm not um, putting out just dread, you know, dreck. Um, and um, <sighs> Do I, the fan reaction, yes. Um, so I had a moment uh, after the first book came out, and um, the first day that it came out, it hit number one, number one bestseller on Amazon. And to me, like, two things happened simultaneously. I saw that and I said, I need to get the next book out as soon as possible. Like, let's do this, let's go. And then I also stepped back and I realized, like, hey, I'm not taking any time right now to enjoy this. Like, this is a number one bestseller. My mind is freaking blown. Like, I cannot believe that enough people wanted to read this that, you know, it, it went somewhere, you know? Um, and uh, I, I don't even know, I don't even know how to say that. Like, um, yeah, I, I took a step back um, to look at it, and but 
the momentum I keep going by either editing and and you know like moving through you know like reading the story and be like oh man this is so good I want to I want I want to see this happen and I'm like oh yeah I'm the author I can make that happen you know um, or I I switch to a different uh, context like I, I um, I'm working on a couple of different books at the same time um, that will possibly eventually get out we'll see um, <laughs> so. Uh, I keep up the momentum also because you know I, I can't be outside right now because it's still deathly cold. Like see um, again, yeah. weather, <laughs> weather, good writing apparently. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, yeah. So hopefully that answers your questions. Yep, yeah, that answers the question from Jay Taylor. Good job. Uh, next one, Apollo Thorn. Apollo Thorn. Um, does Dakota play any MMOs on American servers? <laughs> and where could we grief? Uh, I mean, hang out with him. Um, well, uh, I would play MMOs. Um, I mean, if you're, if you got a guild invite for me, sure, man. Um, uh, currently, I mean, I have, I have the stuff, but I haven't played them in over a year, but I was yeah. like, I was, I was like bet 10 or something on, uh, Elder Scrolls Online when it came out. Uh, I played to free level 20 in Warcraft once, uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, <laughs> um, I own Guild Wars 2, but I haven't played it, like, yeah. I don't think ever. Um, that one was a gift from a friend, and because he wanted me to join him, and I, I, I must have, because it's open, but I don't remember anything about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, typically it's more, like, free stuff, like, uh, if I'm going to get on there. Uh, I do play uh, with a game called Dead by Daylight um, fairly infrequently, but if you're on there, I'll throw you on a meat hook. That's cool. Um, <laughs> that's the whole premise of the game. Um, uh, beyond that, I mean, I, I play like a couple of uh, Battle.net things, like uh, uh, Diablo, or um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, very infrequently, Heroes of the Storm, I guess. Um, otherwise, I, like I mean, you say Hearthstone. I'm like, okay, he seems. Oh yeah, like Hearthstone. Oh yeah, I play Hearthstone. But I mean, I have. Well, I I play. I, I played Hearthstone yeah. for a while. It's definitely um, one of those things, like. As I write and read more lit RPG, I become oddly enough less interested in MMOs because, like, the lit RPG starts to fulfill that that gamer that craving, yeah, yeah that gamer craving, and it's better because without without the judgment of your wife, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> oh, he's thing. reading, isn't he? He's improving himself, yeah. like, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and, but for me, it's also like every MMO I've ever played, I've I've sort of been disappointed by it because I always have such high expectations. I always think it's going to be like this. The most amazing yeah. interactive game ever. It's a and sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and every time I go in, I'm like, okay, this is this is okay. This is not as right. good as I thought it was going to be. But with little RPG, I've always, I mean, in general, it's always exceeded or at least met my expectations of 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 like the cool game stuff that I always imagined in my brain. And you know, so that. But I, sure. I found myself just not as interested in playing MMOs. I mean, so I'm too caught interested in like new things that come out and seeing like oh that's a cool mechanic or that that's those are cool graphics um right. but i know that if i play it it's going to be like it's not as good as the story i wrote or i yeah. read <laughs> yeah exactly um i mean mario was still pretty good but you know. yes you can't, you can't beat <laughs> mario or zelda those are very classic games but again they're not mmos so i think right. they you know they they fulfill a different wheelhouse right. or a different need exactly um but i mean uh to to your question if you have an mmo that you play um, let me know, and if I can afford slash play it or find time for it, um, I would. I'd, I'd love to. You know, um, um, where can they send those uh, those requests to? to uh, so, pop onto my Facebook group. Um, so, the Divine Dungeon uh, on, on Facebook. So, uh, literally, let me search the Divine Dungeon, um, which was cool because I uh, twenty eight thousand people were talking about me the other day, so that was neat. Um, <laughs> from, to add the divine part and just not don't search for just the dungeon. That yeah, that that's a totally different site. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little too much leather for me in there. Um. So, <laughs> uh. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh shoot me a uh, email uh, or not email a uh, uh, instant message, and I will. I have like a twelve minute response rate or something like that. Um, and it's not not a chat bot, even though I've looked into the no, it's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I usually will get back to you pretty quick. Um, and if it's if it's something that I can get or uh, you know find time for, I will certainly. I'd I'd love to play. Um, I have a, I have access to like Mumble, you know, uh, uh, what is the other one? 
I have a whole bunch of different like audio options. Like you, you got like Mumble, you got uh, Teamspeak, uh, Skype, all these other things. I'd prefer not to use Skype because it eats so much RAM just for yeah. everyone. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah. I mean, pretty much anything. I'd, I'd I'd hop on and chat with you for a while if I can. Um, but yeah, let me know. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. Uh, Daniel Schiefenhofen. I never say his last name right. I think. Um, and he's an author that I've I've read really books for. Um, he asks, w "Will the next book have a good part inside the dungeon, or is he going to be evolving the story to focus outside of the dungeon, like Slime Dungeon Chronicles is doing?" Well, the main character is Kel. The main yeah. character is the dungeon. Um, so I do have two points of view. Um, it, you know, like I have uh, Kel and I have Dale. Um, you know, someone said, I'm really worried that this is going to turn into the Divine Dungeon 3 Dale's Quest, you know, um, and it's it's not. Um, it's going to be about 50-50, probably, um, with, I'm, I'm going to try and keep more heavy emphasis on Cal, who is the main character. You know, he's not a co-character, like right. he's the main character. Um, and this is... Uh, the third book is going to be you know, heavily focused on other things such as using the magic system. Um, so the second book was more action-packed, and because of that, you know, we weren't able to put in like, hey, um, you know, like, uh, I learned how to shoot big-ass fireballs or something like that, you know, like, it was more like, oh my gosh, I need to do everything I can to survive because I'm about to die. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You know, um, so um, the third book is going to be more heavily focused on uh, magic, magic systems, um, uh, definitely, uh, you know, upgrading of the dungeon, um, but it's also not going to be like, uh, you know, like, all right, I need... Um, you know, one mana unit in order to, you know, do this. So I need to save up for X amount of time and do this and this and this. I, I'm going to keep it away from being dry. It's going to be experimentation. It's going to be fun. It's going to be um, a little bit crazy, just a little bit. Um, you know, if you read the second book, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, you, I mean, it, it should be very fun. It should be, um, you know, good, but it's, it's not going to be, uh, Dale is the main focus. That's it's it's just not going to happen. So okay, yeah, no, that's perfect. I think that's the answer he's looking for. Um, I, I, there's always going to be a comparison between the Divine Dungeon series and the Slime Dungeon Chronicles, just mm -hmm. because they they're both dungeon stories and there are a lot of the same themes that run through them as far as like balancing out uh, killing adventurers versus enticing Surviving. them into the dungeon, yeah. creating traps, uh, evolving monsters, whether they're you know killer rabbits or or slime monsters or whatever it is. Um, and so those, and they they both seem to be coming out about the same time every year as well. You have a very uh, similar release schedule. Like yours came out first, and then a couple weeks later, Slime Ninja Chronicles came out. So it, they're always going to be, I think, related in part in people's minds. So I, I get his question. It, it, sure. Sometimes you're like, oh, he did this. Does that mean you're going to have to do this too? Or, you know. No. Um, you know, I... There were similarities in the first book, um, but I certainly hope that people realize that it was only like f surface, like only on the surface were there things that are super similarities. Like, you know, like, yes, they're both dungeons. Yes, they both have um, a companion. Yes, they both have an alternate main character. But the stories have, I mean, the stories are very, very unlike each other, very unlike each other. Um, in, in my opinion, at least, I, I don't know if you have a different opinion because you're grinning. But uh, um, I can't see that right now because I lost that third picture, so they can only see you. Uh, okay. But yeah, I'm grinning because <laughs> in my mind, I'm listing like the similarities, and no, they're, they're, they're different stories. I'm not saying they're they're the same, right. um, but it's like saying two different fantasy stories are are not similar in some respects. Like they at their at dun all dungeon stories to me have things in common that right. are just part of the genre. Right, and and, that, and they will have different tales or different themes or different like outcomes or or different like character choices and, and things like that or different right. you know, magic systems, but they're always. I mean, you're still going to compare like two different types of fantasy. You, you know, and that's just kind right. of the way it is in subgenres. Sure, and and um, I mean, you know, uh, in the second book, I did um, add in a little 
a, a little thing, a, a nod to the slime dungeon, um, just uh, for fun. Like, uh, there's there's one part where uh, you know it's going along and it's like um, kind of like a, a slime coalesces because of all the ambient magic in there, and uh, Cal freaks out and he's like. No way, never again. I'm never dealing with the slime dungeon again or with like slimes again. And then yeah. he's like, wait a second, what was that all about? And that that will be explained in the third book or or if uh, the crossover between uh, Falcon and my books actually yeah, uh, takes off. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's something I want to do, but um, and, and that's something I was going to focus on a little bit more after uh, the second book came out. Um, uh, simply because otherwise his his would overpower mine uh, ninety percent of the time, you know, like unless I got like a sneak critical hit in somewhere or something like that. Like, um, yeah, I mean, I would love to do that crossover. It's just it just I haven't had the time for it yet. Um, with uh, you know, classes, work, wife, book, dog, all this other stuff going on. Um, but uh, pretty quick here, I graduate, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and uh, I still have the full time job, so. Yeah, actually, my lunch hours are pretty hectic because I had to get to the school, take the class, and go back to work in that, you know, in that time frame. Um, but um, yeah, after that, you know, I'll have more free time uh, to write, and hopefully, I can, you know, like I'd, I'd love to be good friends with the uh, with Jeff, you know, and uh, um, I'd love Thanks. to have, yeah. yeah, 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 totally, and I'd love to have a, a crossover of the books just to appease the fans, you know, um, like. Of, of his books or of my books that want to see us duke it out or something like that or hurl insults between you know pixie versus fairy or something like that and uh wisp versus fairy i should say um and uh shit does he uh sorry i'm not trying to swear um does he, does he use uh does he use a sprite or a, a pixie i can't remember off the top of my head um, I think it's a sprite, dungeon sprite. Anyway, um, yeah, but I mean, it, it would just be uh, good fun for the two of us, I think. Um, and but again, that's what I want it to be. I want it to be, you know, like, yes, he's someone else in the genre, but I don't see him as competition. I see him yeah. as bolstering the content. You know, like, um, like there's one book out, there's two books out. Awesome. There's more of this type that I can read because I can't, you know tie down that author and force them to write for me and get out yes. a new book every day. So have you actually read um, the, the latest Slime Dinner Chronicles book? I, I have not yet. I have okay. not yet. So this is part um, of what I'm saying similarities. I'm like, if you go read it because you're going to, I see similarities between his book and yours. Okay. Like, it, like the way you decided to, to explore the world. Like, uh, so I'm like, okay, he, he eventually has a character who comes out as, um, like an extension of the dungeon, the same way kind of Dell is for, for, um, for your dungeon. Sure. And uh, towards the end of his third book, he also has a character that comes out at, and kind of lets the dungeon explore the world through that character's eyes. Oh. I, I don't think it's intentional, but it's like, it's, I, I, I think as dungeon stories, sometimes you have you want to do certain things like explore the world, and there are only so many ways you can do it when your when your main character is a static object. You, you might be surprised. Mean? Yeah. Wait well, till wait, wait till book three, buddy. <laughs> okay. well, I'm not saying you can't be creative. I just think it's okay. That's probably part part of what that question is like. Oh, you're you guys seem to be having similar themes and thoughts about like how that. how to like explore your world sometimes. Gotcha. And that's just, like I said, it's a consequence of like a a subgenre in that certain recurring mm -hmm. themes are gonna occur occasionally. Sure. Um, all right. So uh, next one then, I guess. That's it. We're done. That's, that's it. it. Oh, that's Daniel it. had the honor of being the very last time I had. I had when book three is coming up, but you already answered that way sure. way early in the podcast sure. in the in the interview, man. So that's kind of it. Uh, was there anything else you want to talk about before we head off? Um, no, I think I'm pretty solid. Um, but uh, I mean, uh, again, I just wanted to, to thank everyone that uh, picked up the books. Uh, I wanted to say, you know, like, uh, thank you for making this series continue and. Um, you know, uh, so I didn't stop after book one because uh, that was actually originally the plan was only one book, um, even though it kind of left off with the, you know, uh, with room for it. Um, but I, I mean, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's uh, made it possible. Thank you to everyone that's uh, purchased the book and read it, and especially those of you who did that all of that and left a good review. Amazing, you, you guys are wonderful, um, and uh, I hope. Uh, you know, to see you, you guys can always reach me on my Facebook page. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, pretty much just my soapbox there. I'll get off of it. But uh, oh, you know, it just occurred to me. 
how we could do that dungeon fight. Uh, we could do a, a, a Google chat like this, we, just him, you, and me, and you guys, your dungeons can face off head to head, and like a like a dungeon roll battle. Like you could have character sheets for each one oh, of yeah. you with like your different uh, monsters as like abilities, <laughs> or like different traps that you set out for each other, like to kill each other's monsters. And you can just make 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 rolls live and like see who wins <laughs> according to their characteristics. And I'd be like the DM saying, "Okay, you know, Cal, Cal, Cal emits his cultivation technique and unleashes." <laughs> You know, killer mushrooms, and you know, <laughs> the other dungeon releases electric slimes. Battle, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, with the Earth affinity that uh, you know uh, mushrooms have, I feel like they'd have an advantage in that case. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, we're all going to be rooting for our own characters. So, um, great man. Well, thank you again for having me on. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate uh, very much for for taking the time. I know you have a lot of things to do. You have. A lot of writing to do apparently i oh, I, yes. I, I feel really bad that i don't write as much as you no I, don't don't worry about it, it. Is, um i mean yeah, I, it, is what it is you have very quality material so uh you write at your own pace man i'm looking forward to the next book so. yeah i'm always looking forward to yours as well so thank you very much for coming on the podcast and talking to me about you know the things that we both love little rpg and divine dungeons and a bunch of good story and author ideas and just you know hanging out because you know you're a nice guy and i like talking to cool people as are you <laughs> and you are awesome as well, man. And it's always a pleasure to, to chat with you. So um, we'll uh, keep at it. And I mean, you have my phone number. So, you know, whenever. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Facebook, now, but, for anybody uh, who wants to uh, contact Dakota Crowd, remember he has a Facebook page, The Divine Dungeon. Uh, he also has an Amazon author page. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes for his all the content to his books and, of course, his Goodreads page. Um, so remember, if you read his books, leave him a review. They're really important for authors because they. They mix mix with that Amazon algorithm that that tells people who who to recommend it to, and you know, so it helps people find those great stories that you love. You help other people find that same story when you leave a review. So, so remember, do that. That's always an, an author's helper is a good review, or even just a bad review, just a review in general. So, thank you everybody for for listening and for watching to the podcast. And if you want to say goodbye real quick, we'll end the podcast. All right. Well, hey, thank you everyone, and. Um, We'll talk to you soon, and hope to see you. Uh, hope to see your names in the review section or on my uh, uh, Facebook page. So, talk to you all soon. Perfect. And for the Lit RPG Podcast, I am Ramon Mejia. Remember, until we can hang out again, remember to go read some Lit RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>